how they uh, let people know that it was time for dinner or time to get dressed for dinner. Because again, the ladies at the house would have never worn for dinner the same thing that they had worn for breakfast, mid-morning, lunch, tea in the afternoon. <laughs> All right. And of course, what set society apart in those days was the use of calling cards. Lady MacDonald would have had her own, and in that she would have indicated her at-home days, let's say Tuesdays from 4 to 6. So that's when you were supposed to come for tea, or just to chat, with the understanding that you were only going to be here for 20 minutes, 30 tops. You were definitely not staying for the two hours. And this is a, it's a beautiful room, because it's really big, and that's the fireplace, the focal point, and flanking it, there's two beautiful mirrors that make the room look even bigger than what it is. Interestingly enough, when the house was being restored, right behind the mirror they found the original wallpaper in pristine condition. So this wallpaper is exactly the same. The only difference was that the other one was raised, this is flat. But the color, the design, everything is just as the way it was. Uh, those doors lead to the veranda, so during the, during the summer there is wicker furniture, just like they had, to, so, to go outside and have tea. The stained glass, it's original to the house, uh, and the woodwork. You're going to see that duplicated in the second floor, and then we have this one, which is absolutely beautiful, and this was there for decorative reasons, and also to allow for better air circulation. Uh, when you look at this room, uh, you cannot see it really from here very well, but that uh, chess board is made of paper mache as well. Mm. Just like this ink stand. Okay. This is paper mache. And you have the ink wells, the little box for the stamps. And again, is lacquered, mother of pearl inlay, and is gilded. There are many uh, pieces in this house that are made of paper mache. And of course, the piano and the phonograph. Mm. This beautiful room, and everybody loves it because it's light and so full of light after the darkness of the rest of the house. This, this is as masculine a room as the other was feminine. Mm -hmm. This is a man's room. And again, here we are back to the dark colors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a beautiful room, nevertheless, and it has a fireplace. Mm -hmm. The tiles were made in England. They were imported from England, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see many fireplaces in this house. The stained glass, again, is original to the house. And right behind the, um, the desk are the heating pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, four of them, when you look at it, when you look at the size of this room, here they have the four pipes, this is facing west and it has a fireplace. It would have been extremely warm in here, but you really had to have a fireplace. Mm -hmm. And this is where the gentlemen would come after dinner to, uh, to talk, uh, to smoke, which they were not allowed to do in the presence of ladies, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, to drink. Mm -hmm and to discuss politics, which uh, women definitely could not possibly understand. <laughs> now, the interesting thing is that when the house was being restored, somebody stole the window. Um, <laughs> they were desperate to get it back, needless to say. So what they did through the media was to let everybody know that whoever had it, to please return it. Nobody was going to ask any questions. Nobody was going to be charged. Just return the window. And the phone call came at 2 in the morning and letting them know where it was. It was actually in a cemetery by a church. So by two hours later, by 4 in the morning, they were there already picking it up and bringing it back. So the stained glass window is back. Mm -hmm. Ow. Oh, look at the cranny boots. <laughs> okay, this is the master bedroom. Mm -hmm. Another beautiful room with a nice bay there, the heating pipes, mm -hmm. the fireplace for a room this size, mm -hmm. when you really think about it. And through here, Mm -hmm. is Lady McDonald's walk-in closet. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
if we could go that way, and we can't, because Lady Macdonald's bathroom has not been restored, okay? But nevertheless, to the right would have been her bathroom, mm -hmm. then is his dressing room, mm -hmm. and then the family bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why he had a separate dressing room and she would have dressed here was because in Victorian times, it was unseemly for a man and a woman to get dressed or undressed in the same room. And I will not comment on that. <laughs> so any more than what we actually cuffed. So, lawyer, he was a member of parliament, he was minister of the interior, he was premier of Manitoba for a very short period of time, and he was police magistrate all the way to the time when he uh, passed away in 1929. So he was the police magistrate during the great strike.